All right, we are ready and raring to go for game two of the best of three match. For those just joining us, uh, this is a best of three bronze medal match between Teex88 and the Hacksaw uh, in the Super Mario Bros. 3 tournament. Uh, the Hacksaw took game one uh, by just over a minute over um, Teex88 in a very uh, entertaining race uh, that was pretty close throughout, but uh, some World 4 and World 7 ultimately uh, did it in, for I think, for Teex, and Hacksaw was able to overcome some early uh, struggles. So... We are off here in uh, game uh, game two of this. Uh, both runners uh, in sync fairly early on here. Uh, Teague slightly behind. He went for an early mushroom just as he did in game one. Uh, Hacksaw is content to play as Small Mario until now. So, Teeks is actually taking a slender, bar barely a few frame lead over uh, his, over the hacksaw as we go into uh, first auto scroller of the game one four. Right, and sorry to leave you for that first. No, um, it's all right. For a uh, few stages there. It's all right. Uh, I took a bit longer than I thought. That's all right, but. Uh, and while, and while we wait uh, for this uh, incredibly exciting auto-scroller to be done, please give our runners tonight a follow. These are two of the finest Mario 3 players around. Both of them are very, uh, very, very knowledgeable and uh, you know, very welcoming. Uh, and I can speak from experience since I've sat in both of their streams. And they are ve they're very, very good and uh, very uh, open welcoming to uh, anyone watching them play Mario 3. Uh, it's been a, uh, it's put on a terrific show in game one, and it looks like we're going to get more of the same here in uh, game two. And, and if there is a game three, we will proceed uh, as, uh, as, as intended right after this. So, uh, Teague's actually getting a, a, kind of a decent bit of luck there with, um, the Hammer Bro coming up towards him. Uh, if he gets one more good movement, he'll get rid of that Hammer Bro really early, and that would be nice for him. It'd save him a couple of seconds, having to, he doesn't have to wait for the Hammer Bro to move around and, the, and gets it. So, early Hammer Bro wow. for Teague. That's just some good luck. You really can't manipulate uh, Hammer Brothers at all in the first world, so. Not, not, <laughs> not in that, not in that respect. No. Um, so that's good for him, and uh, so Haxor. He's not gonna lose very much time. He may lose, I don't know, two seconds because of that. But yeah. uh, in Teeks's case, it's whatever you can. Uh, it's like take whatever you can get at this point because he's really gonna need all of it and he's I'm sure he's gonna you know recover from the uh, mistakes he did make in game one notably world four uh, and um, uh, seven one but uh, Haxor had his uh, fair share of hiccups too um, World 2 was not particularly kind to him. He died twice in 2-4. Luckily for him, they happened uh, early both times. But all of that uh, moving around and trying to juggle the levels and the hammer bro position uh, kind of threw him off for a little while, but he was able to pull away, to pull back into the lead around World 4 when uh, Teeks was having his troubles. So, yep, in World One airship now, Teeks is gonna be having to pick up the fireball, uh, fire, uh, flower in the stage, whereas Hexer has it already. Yeah. 
And Haxor did a little uh, maneuver there. The hammer bro was in the in the ideal spot, in the ideal spot on the map where he would get a uh, a free fireball. He waited until the very end to grab it to uh, save a little bit of time there. But uh, so good fire kill for Geeks uh, and Haxor as well. 507 and a 508. Exactly a second apart. So that's actually uh, better than their uh, World 1 splits. It was 515 for Haxor and uh, 516 for Teak. So nice improvement there by both players to go into World 2. As we go into World 2, uh, actually, both players got good uh, hammer bro, early hammer bro movement, getting the music box bro in front of 2-3 and being able to take care of him before they went into that stage. So we'll see if that happens again here in Game 2 or if they're going to have to divide and conquer. Uh, Haxor gets some good movement. Uh, Teak's not so much. So I need one more good movement, and he's fine. Near sync right now between our runners to go to, to uh, two fort. Haxor is going to get the early hammer, bro. Uh, Teague's not, unfortunately, will not. We're going to see a bit of a uh, divergence in terms of where they're at. For a little bit until probably uh, around two by into probably the pyramid actually I'd say. Yeah, but we'll be defeating Boom Boom and Boom Boom here at roughly the same point. Yeah, they they are actually this is near perfect sync. Yeah. Wow. And and simultaneous orb grabs. You gotta love it. Yeah, it may be World 2 sync, but it's still a sync. Hey. I'll take it. I'll... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Never take these things for granted. So. Yep, and there you see hacks are going to be able to go for the early Fireflyer uh, Hammer Brother, while Teeks is just going to be going straight into 2-5. Uh, yeah, so... I, so, 2-3 down for uh, Teeks, uh, Haxor almost finished 2-3 uh, himself. Uh, I don't know numbers. <laughs> uh, so, Hammer Bros are actually in decent position for uh, for Teeks. He could knock both of them out pretty quick if they don't start, if they don't run around all over the place. So that's not the, that's not the worst pattern yet, sure. Yeah, that was probably the worst mm. case. That, <laughs> that was the worst case scenario. So he's he's going back, swinging around at two five. Actually had a little trouble at the outset there. Uh, kind of lost footing, but recovers and will uh, carry on. Yeah, they now they're going back to where they need they should have been the first time. Now he's just gonna mop up here. Uh, or, uh, oh, and it just walked right into him. <laughs> Force draw. No, no complaints here. So Teeks finishes off the second hammer, bro. And we'll be on his way to two four now, and then I'll do the hammer, bro the, the fire bros, and then he'll take care of uh, the pyramid, which uh, Haxor is in right now. Right. So.
unfortunately for Teeks, the Fire Bros are in the worst possible position, at least as far as where they ended up. And, well, Hacksaw's not getting a whole lot of help there either, so... Yeah, Teeks has a bit of a lead, I think. Because Hacksaw still has to do a uh, 2-4. 2-4, I think, is shorter than this day, than the Pyramid. Um, uh, unless, of course, Hacksaw does what he did in Game 1, then it's going to be a bit longer. Um, right. To okay. death. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of did a stutter step there, and uh, I'm sure that he finished. Um, yeah, this is almost dead even going okay, into the yeah. airship. Teak's gonna be entering it. Uh, oh, oh, Axor getting in because of getting a slightly, getting like a quarter of a second ahead because of the screen transition. Yeah, map panning is weird. Times. Yeah, so we resume our uh, synced uh, playthrough. Yep. resumes as we are in the World 2 airship, just you know, taking our time as we wait to face the next Koopa Kid. Yes indeed, Mello, the sync resume, and uh, I'll see, see if Haxor decide, tries to go for the, uh, the fire kill on Morton this time. He didn't do it in game one, and I know he's done it before. It's probably the hardest, one of the hardest fire kills to do, uh, largely because of Morton's position relative to Mario. Pretty awkward uh, fire kill. He gets it. Nicely done by Haxor. Just a few seconds of a difference between Haxor and Teeks on up World 2. Less than five seconds. Yeah, about 12.02 to 11.59. So, and yeah, that's, both of them are ahead of their game one uh, splits right now. Teeks by five seconds and Haxor by slightly more than that. <laughs> no deaths this time, so yep. you know, he improved by 36 seconds. Both players uh, putting on a fine show as we go into World 3. speed all the way for the Haxor in 3-2, and he is vaulted way... Ooh, and oh, and Teeks is having some trouble with his platforming, so no fire kill for him this time. Yep, gonna have to wait out that piranha plant. Yeah, and... That's small uh, Mario right now. Yeah, so that's not good uh, for uh, Teeks. He's not going to be able to get a fire kill on um, on Boom Boom and 3F1. That's the main thing. Cheap, cheap strike again. Uh, and some. Oh, he's not. Teeks isn't going to bother with the mushroom. He's just going to play this through. Probably not a bad idea, actually. It's going to be a little touch and go until he gets 3-5, especially if he has to deal with any uh, hammer bros on the board. And almost certainly, yes, he will. Should be on dry land, so that, that at least will mitigate some of, the, some of his problems. So Axel is going to take care of the hammer hammer bro.
Thanks for uh, cognizant of that Hammer Bro uh, current position. Going to deal with uh, three, four first. I mean, at least get rid of the Hammer Bro. And losing a lot of time having to deal with the water Hammer Brother. Yeah. As Small Mario. Yeah, that was not what he wanted, but uh, you know, he's going to have to ride it out, and Haxor is going to deal with the second hammer bro before using his P-Wing at 3-5. Which Teeks is currently in, and pretty straightforward. Finishing off uh, Hammer Bro number two. So going into three six, which uh, hacks were just entered, I'd say there's about a half about. 15 seconds difference, 15, 20 seconds, give or take. Oh, sounds about right. Good 3 4 for Teeks. Yeah, it looks about like 20 seconds right now. Mello having some faith in Teeks' ability to time travel. Uh, at the very least, manipulate the game so instead of going 30 frames a second, it goes to, you know, Air Force speed at 60. That's That would save him quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So, actually, nice sync there with the uh, level clear, 36 37, respectively. Uh, always a treat to see. Hacks are going to get the Super Swim into the Water Fort. are getting about 1809 on that boom boom kill. Teeks uh, just about to get to it as well. Um, just after this little section here of Water Fort. 3 8 right now for the Haxor uh, with uh, Boss Bass uh, trolling as usual. 1831 for Teeks. So yeah, 22 seconds. Is Haxor successfully makes the jump this time. H. Yes, okay. indeed. He didn't get it in game one, but he certainly got it there. He's got. Yeah, and now it's Teeks' turn to get his H jump. Was able to get the first try. Hopefully, he's going to be able to get the second try as well. Looking good so far. Yep, able to get the setup and get right over that H. Double H. Get onto the uh, World 3 airship with Wendy. And strangely enough, no H's in chat other than someone laughing. That's about it. Eh, close enough. Sure. Yeah. There you go. 
There are some H's. Hey, thank you, Mellow and Scott. We appreciate it. Uh... I don't know why anyone is paying F, uh, pressing F to pay respects right now. These runs are still going pretty well. Very close together. Um, just within 20 seconds at this point. Yeah. Plenty of time. Point. We'll see. Uh, it should be a pretty easy fire kill for both players. They didn't have any trouble in game one with Wendy. As far as that was concerned. Twenty fifty two for uh Paxor. Another pretty straightforward fight for Teeks, and he'll get his at twenty one fifteen. So he's a little slower compared to his uh Game one split, which was 21 11, but uh, Haxor is ahead by almost 40 seconds right now. Going into Giant Land. And very sharp movement by him, and very, pretty strong overall play has got him in good position right now. Yeah, if you remember, Haxor was able to, and showed it yet again, able to pull off uh, the optimal P speed strat there. While where Teeks might have to go with the buffer with the Koopa as well. Yeah. Yep, going for it, grabbing that Koopa just so he can get the P speed here. Mm -hmm. So, losing a little bit of time. Not significant though. It's little things like that, and like the 3 2 uh, P speed strat uh, that Haxor did and um, Teeks didn't. It's, like, it's those little things that kind of tell you the difference in some respects between a 112 runner, which Teeks is, and a 110 runner, which uh, Haxor is. I mean, both exceptional players, but it's those right. little, little bits here and there, strewn throughout the levels, that kind of demonstrate the difference between the two runners. And you wouldn't think it's a lot, but, you know, you have like 12 or 13 or however many it is of those things, and they do kind of add up. So... My two hour hacks are going to be able to go through 4-3 smoothly. He's going to show off his 4-3. As a local biker is showing off his bike. In Pro's World. Yep. So, ooh, hacks are taking a yeah. hit there. Not gonna and, be uh, able to do fire for this boom boom. Fortunately, no. And nor will uh, Teeks. And actually, Teeks taking two mm. hits there. So he, in the he, same he, position as he was in race one at this point, in terms yeah. of power-ups. Yeah, and that ended up really hurting him because he actually took a death in 4-5 as a result. So, uh, he, well, he's going to get rid of uh, a second hammer bro here, which is nice. But all of us are intensely, uh, you know watching Teeks' screen very closely as we hope that he is not going to be falling to the same mistakes that he did in the first race at this at this spot with this sort of state. Well, so far so good. Um, as far as his, his basic, and there's a force draw for Hackstore, which is nice. It's a bit of time. Gets rid of them before he has to go into 4, 5, and 6.
two Hammer Bros and uh, a stage at this point. Two runners as uh, Teeks finishes off Hammer Bro number three. Axor is done with four five. So a moment of truth for Teeks. Can he uh, get through this? Almost gave, almost gave it back. I got a little too close to that piranha. Giant piranha was able to pull back at the last second. Yeah, able to get the fire flower and also able to maintain it. Something that he wasn't able to do in the first race. Right, he actually did 4F2 before he did 4 6 as a result because he, needed, he wanted that fire flower to do the optimal P speed strat in 4 6. And the valid, stra valid strategy, but uh, it you know, did ultimately cost a few extra seconds as a result. And Axor just finished 4F2 and is on his way. To, yes, the most boring stage in the game. Yeah. Certainly a little boring. Airship. Okay. And so, uh, Haxor is, uh, was not able to get the, uh, Peace Feed strategy in 2F, uh, in 4F2. So, we'll be looking to see if, uh, Teeks will be able to pull it off. It does look to have the Peace Feed. Will, be able, will he be able to use it? <sighs> no. He unfortunately, he unfortunately hit the Peace Switch there. And had to basically go through the hidden door and then go back out again. So... Would I tell that Sage's parents that it's most boring? Yes. Yes, I would. I had already asked that question. Truth to power, and so forth. Which, honestly, I respect James for taking my <laughs> jokes. Someone likes them well enough that they're actually going to repeat them, so thank you. If you want to give me a follow, too, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> follows, follows for all. Yeah. <laughs> Start with the runners, but uh, yeah, if you're feeling like it afterwards, uh, yeah, you can give us a follow, too. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> We're just having fun. You can see all our names. There yeah. on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I, don't think we, I don't think we have commands for those. Yeah, but, we don't have uh, commands, but the, all those uh, names you see there on the bottom underneath all the feet, uh, both the feeds are there. Yeah, there's no bot. There's no command for the bot to do the, give you that. I'm not telling you to do anything. <laughs> Just saying it's a thing. Thing. Very much a thing. And this is the uh, thing. So we're just about finished here with the World 4 airship. Uh, going for another fire kill and gets it. Nicely done. We'll have a 21, 821. Wand grab. Ha Teeks is most of the way done with um, World 4. So, Mello, why do I have an eight at the end of my name? Yeah, confused. <laughs> Troy of Athen eight. Troy okay. of Athen eight. Hey, that kind of works. Yeah, you kind of just gotta make it flow. Twenty nine oh eight for T. So forty seven seconds between the runners. Uh, both of them still actually ahead of their, um, uh, game one split. Um, Haxor's ahead by 38 seconds, and Teeks is even ahead by 16 seconds. So, cleaner world four for both of them. Uh, Haxor is not make the, uh, the pit, uh, the plunge into the pit of despair in 5-2. T 
Teague's Haxor make going through down into 5F1. There by uh, Teeks to finish 5 2. Hacks were getting a good pattern on the first Hammer Bro set. Uh, easy, quick, easy kills. It goes into 5 3. Axer was able to pull this off the first time around. Uh, being, yeah. be, being the consistent runner that he is, uh, one of the higher level runners, I of course don't really expect him to have too much trouble with this. And as I say that, he is going to take a little bit of damage, but still has the P-Speed. But it's still going to take the Fire Flower. Yeah. He's going to lose the P-Speed on purpose, just so he can get that power up. And it was just towards the end of 5-3 anyway, so it's not a huge yeah. time loss. Uh, and he's, I think he's largely go stopped for that, just so he can take care of the Fire... Uh, take care of the Hammer Bros quickly. And yeah, ch people in chat saying the Jinx is real. I know Commentator's Curse is real. Yeah. I, I have enough experience with commentary to know that it's real. You had enough experience to where you've actually uh, committed it yourself once or twice. We all have. I've lost uh, count. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Teeks maintaining his peace speed and sails through 5-3. Teeks has got a couple of hammer bros to take care of. Alright, so... Let's see how the hammer bros treat uh, the runners here in... Uh... Game two, uh, Haxor actually uh, went for early cloud use to skip 5-5 five, five so he could get rid of uh, his hammer bro right away. Uh, Teeks uh, got his boxed into the corner by the lock uh, near, near, the, near the starting point and was able to take care of that. I think Haxor's going to do it again. Yep. Yep, going to take that cloud. Okay. Golden opportunity, don't waste it. Back to 5-5. Five, five. See if he's able to get the peace speed strategy on this stage. It and took as a I hit. say that, <laughs> taking the hit to the fire snake. Well, that's not so bad, and he's gonna go into 5-6 anyways, and... You know, you really don't need fire Mario in 5-6 way, so it's kind of an irrelevant... Uh, Thing. Right. Be in the parabial stage, you kind of just gotta get your jumps right and move on. And easier said than done. This is uh, a, this is a bit of platforming that can be tricked, um, particularly with the low, with the narrow uh, landing and uh, the auto scroll. Not uncommon to see a run go uh, pear-shaped because of um, something, some random weirdness in five six. So we're leaving nothing to chance. Takes care of the fire chomp. Teeks still has the Hammer Brother on the on the map, whereas Haxor has taken care of all of his Hammer Brothers in this world. Yeah, not a hundred percent sure where he is. I think he's on the uh, on the, lo the left. Yeah, he's of by the lock. lock. He's by the lock. It like, should be okay. Just he should one be below okay. the lock on the left, oh. I believe, is where it was. All right, so 
should, let's see where he moves here. Uh, okay, that's, that's actually pretty fortunate. Yeah, that's doable down. right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if he went down, that would have been bad. Uh, that yeah. was actually like two seconds, second and a half. So, pretty fortuitous bit of luck there for uh, Teague's. Answer Chad's question. Uh, Hacksaw leads by about a stage and a half right now. World 5. He's in 5-8. Uh, Teeks is about to begin 5-F2. Lava Fort. Clean 5-8 execution from uh, the Hacksaw. Teeks uh, doing the same with uh, Lava Fort. Good state of mind, realizing that he wasn't gonna despawn that, uh, ha the dry bones there. Yeah. Teague's able to pull off a good 5 8. Axor just uh, continuing his 45 second or so climb through uh, the 5 9 uh, auto scroller. And yeah, Scott, I agree with you. Watching 5-8 is a scary jump. It, it, that last jump, the, doing a crouch jump, get just underneath the Lakitu onto that final cloud, does yeah. look so scary. I think you meant 5-9, but your point about 5-8 is well taken. But, uh... Oh, the one in chat? Yeah. You potentially yeah. missed the stage? Okay. Yeah. The point is well taken on both, uh... Both have their uh, their little horrors to them. Haxor underway in the World 5 airship. Uh, Teak's not far behind. Finishes up 5-9. Uh, High road here in uh, the end of five at twelve five. On counting on the sound of fireballs, and honestly, I have noticed in a few matches that I don't commentate, I've listened in on um, people doing uh, hitting, you know, throwing fireballs to the beat of the music, especially during auto scrollers. Yeah, if it kind of keeps you. Kind of in in the moment and in the game, hey, go for it. Thirty-eight twenty-six uh, for Haxor on a not easy fire kill. Oh. Fire kill for Teeks. He grabs the wand at 39.09, so he actually gains some time back uh, against uh, the Haxor. He, uh, the deficit has dropped to 43 seconds as opposed to 47, so not a significant amount of time, but still nice to see Teeks. Uh, he's uh, continuing the battle and, uh, is, and is ahead of his. Um, game one time. Haxor is doing 6-3 first, I, largely for the Hammer Bro, I think, more than anything. Get rid of yeah, he headed down for the first Hammer Brother, so he was already yeah. towards the path of 6-3, so he just kept right. going. So that's not unusual. 
So he's going to do 6-2 next, and then he's going to set himself up for uh, the 6-F1. Yeah, Teague's getting a similar uh, RNG for that Hammer Brother, also going to have uh, be going down and then hitting 6-3 into 6-2. Not able to get the first jump. Yeah, that's, a, that's because of ice physics, that's a fairly tricky jump. Um, right. It's not something I generally go for myself, but. Uh, it looks like Teague's able to. Uh, has been able to find a way to go for it while still being safe and actually being able to uh, not die from it. Yeah. It's alright. Haxor is done with 6 2. He's on to 6 F1, aka Elevator Ford, I suppose. Name, that's probably as good a name as any. Damage um, Boost Forest works, uh, for it works too. Yeah. Whatever, whatever works. Uh, Haxor gets his star. He's gonna go for the orb kill. Get out your orbs in chat if you haven't already. Actually, I have a new suggestion for the, uh, for a name. It's called Spanish Fort because of the upside down question mark. Oh, that's not bad actually. I like that. <laughs> Span Span Spanish Fort. Yeah, sounds nice. Thinking of the uh, the Clash song Spanish Bombs. Kind of has a similar rhythm to it, but. Uh... That aside for a second, uh, six four underway for Haxor, uh, six F one, uh, the now newly titled Spanish Fort. Uh, El Orbo. <laughs> El Orbo, yes. We got El Barto and El Orbo. Hmm. Coincidence? Probably. <laughs> oh! Oops, dude. That Little... was. Caught that was the edge. Caught yeah. the edge there, and uh, but nice recovery by uh, by Teeks to survive six four. Yeah, uh, I got I got very scared there by Teeks. I I didn't even I I don't even fully know if he intentionally did that. Uh, okay. prob Ooh, oh, Haxor taking a mm. death. He he almost died from this in uh, in six in game one. This time he was not so lucky. Yeah, doing, uh, being small Mario, doing with the pattern like that for the Hammer Brothers, just sometimes you just can't do it. He gets a force draw, so he's got to deal. He can't get out of this, so he can't. Even if he dies, it's gonna be the same thing until he fin until he succeeds. But luckily, first try, got a good pattern. Yeah, got the ideal patterns when you have the small Mario right. uh, on the second and third tries. The first try, unfortunately. Uh, was not working out for him. Let's see if Hexor is going to be able to get the D spawn on this level. Oh yeah, no problem. Nice and easy. <laughs> Teague's opting to use a uh, a star there to uh, help grease the wheels a bit. Uh, second hammer bro uh, moves away, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Hexor's on his way to six seven. Ooh, oh, Teeks! Uh, losing the P-Wing! That's not good. That means he's going to have to go to the backup. And that's going to cost him some time. Um, I 
And of course, he won't be despawned. Oh, he did oh it my again! <sighs> Hesitated, and that costs him, so. Round three. He's just not having a good day. Of course, gonna be having to take the shell up because at this point, yeah, not gonna despawn anything. Right. Uh, to answer Chad's question, I don't believe they've set a date for uh, the finals between Scooby and Mitch. Um, I don't think they've scheduled a day yet. So, because of those, because of the two misses by. Uh, Teeks, uh, Hagsor is in very good shape. He's already in 6F2. Meanwhile, Teeks is just about to start 6-7. Um, 6 8 underway for uh, Haxor. Get out your big H's now, chat. I honestly don't think I saw any lowercase H's the first time around, so. Uh, at the end, we did, towards uh, when we got on them on the airships. Get out your big H, chat. Big H. There we go. There. H. H jump. H jump. H jumps in. Oh, we got a lot of H's uh, there. Uh, all right. Thank you, chat. Your enthusiasm is infectious. H is for hacks. Well, yes, that's. Six ten. Hacks or holding on to a piece the final uh, half of the stage. Nice uh, platforming there. Teeks uh, navigates uh, cleanly through 6F2. He's about three, he's about two and a half stages behind, I'd say, at this point. I'm not really going to be able to tell because 6-9 you know, six, six, is so short p wing Good question. Actually, don't know if you have enough P wings for that. Uh, I think if you did, if you if you if you made uh one pit stop and for it, I don't think it. I think it would would have been negligible after doing it twice. Though it pro he probably ended up losing time. He if he had taken an intentional death. I think. Yeah, there aren't many P-Wings in this game, and we end up using them. Yeah. Almost the, all of them, essentially. For the, yeah, actually all of them, yeah. For the top-level uh, speedrunners, they strategically use their P-Wings in specific places to uh, to maximize their uh, their value. It's There is some room, there is some margin for uh, choice, I suppose. Ooh, Teeks losing fire Mario, that you have to go for the backup. You're not gonna get P speed for the rest of the stage, unfortunately. Uh Alright chat, it's that time again. World seven, the seven one clip. How many jumps is it going to take Haxor and um, Teeks to make it through? Do you recall in game one, Haxor needed, what, eight jumps? I believe he got it on the ninth try. Oh, it was the ninth try, that's right. And Teeks, unfortunately, went, in, went through the door and had to play the level like a mere mortal. Or not gonna try for the uh, the fire kill. Gets the one at forty nine fifty three. 
people so... are hoping for a close match, they would hope that Haxor uh, would take more tries than Teeks. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. Uh, you got James saying 11 for Axor, Teeks 15, and Axor in 2, Teeks 7. Hacks three, Teeks actually goes to the door again. Wow. Oof. And that was a first try for Haxor right there. I... Oh, yeah. yeah. Mac and cheese for Haxor. And the chat is popping off as we have seen it. I was looking away, at, I was pretty much looking at chat, looked back at the screen, and saw Haxor in a wall. So I was just like, well, that's first try right there. Yep. <laughs> First try, mac and cheese for Haxor in 7-1. That really puts him in terrific position for uh, the rest of the match. Uh, Teeks is going to have to basically have to match him. Going for another fire kill and gets it on uh, Lemmy. Nicely done. Teeks at 51.28, so he's almost, he's over 90 seconds behind at this stage. Yeah, he, uh, he really needs, he needs an airship death at this point, I think. Yeah, which honestly, I don't even want to see considering the pace that Haxor's on. Yeah, ha uh, Haxor is, uh, 11 seconds ahead of his, uh, pace from game one. But, uh, that was based on his World 6 splits, and after what happened 7-1, he's looking pretty good. Teeks, unfortunately, no double mac and cheese. Fifth try for Teeks, so a very respectable uh, effort, to be sure. And, uh-oh, he gets, uh... That's mm, triple flower. Triple flower, yes. So well, that cost him about five seconds right there. That's unfortunate, but uh, hey, extra lives. So, Haxor uh, avoiding a triple of his own. And, uh,. Triple star would have actually been even worse because that's five up. Yeah. So Haxor s sailed through seven five and is on his way to seven four. Another level nobody particularly likes. I'm just kind of curious. Um, how is he compared to like say Zakubi's pace? Compared to what? Uh, the sub-111 that happened. I'm not sure. I'd have to take a look at his blitz. Uh, speed run. And might, he might have that information readily accessible. Uh, I thought um, he had been recording stuff. No. <laughs> not that. Let me look real quick while we've got a few seconds here, because this, like, this level take, takes a while. Uh, doesn't have the splits on and It's fine. Either way, I look, all I was saying really is I feel like Haxor is on some pretty good pace in general. Yeah. Just like... Accor this... According to uh, his uh, PB, his uh, split after World 6 uh, was 49.04. With the wand grab, it was at 49.04, so... Right. I, I guess. It? Just, I mean, did he get first try though? <laughs> I didn't didn't go into that great <laughs> of detail, but uh, I assume it was either first try or something pretty good. Right. Uh, seven five done for uh, Teeks, I believe. Yes, seven five, and Haxor is done with seven four. are now going through the piranha plant stage oh gonna lose a little bit of time there yeah a little bit not, not that uh significant uh 
uh, Chad his um, his split at the after World Seven was one hour 30, 30 seconds, thirty one seconds really, practically one one hour thirty one seconds. So. So, uh, 7F1 down for Haxor, on his way to 7-6. I think he, that's his last key wing, I think. Uh, yeah, so no, just I, no, based on that, it, it looks like uh, Haxor might be, it might be possible for him to get us like a mid-111. Maybe. If everything breaks his way, and yeah, he's, uh, he's looking at a very, very good time. Uh, so, on his way to the final island, set lead off 7-7, seven, seven, uh, not gonna bother with the clip. It's a race, of course it's it. Yeah. Uh, uh, some runners seem to think it's worth, you know, a couple of tries just for yucks, and then you go and play 7-7 seven, seven like normal. But, uh, he is gonna go for the two, uh, star cycle, no problem. Goes through like a champ. Uh, Almost makes it look up. intended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Teeks, I think because of his star count, can't go for uh, a star star strat. Uh, set in the first piranha stage, no problem. Yeah, he's only got through. Not taking any damage. Axor uses his last. Um, he uses his last P wing uh, to get over the top of uh, seven nine, save himself some time. Nice clip there, That's first bad. try. That's, That's gonna a five st second time save. Easily, yeah. That's very nicely done by Haxor. So he is probably gonna use uh, a star in seven eight to help uh, speed things along a little bit as far as that goes. Yep. And yeah, Axe are getting some really good clips in this run. Yeah, Mac and Cheese in 7-1, uh, and actually another one, I suppose, if you will, in 7-9, uh, with that pipe clip. Uh, very nice uh, bit of movement there. So he's got his hammer suit, so now... He got... He ran the tables uh, in uh, game one, he held it all the way through. Can he do it again? Ooh, Eeks, unfortunately, is gonna have to hurry and get that lap. He gets a star, but, uh, let's get two cycle here. I'm going for it. Nice, nicely done. Uh, chat's asking for run times in game one. Game one, uh, Paxor had a Blocked a 112.08 and uh, Eeks had a 113.13. Not the optimal uh, boom boom kill for uh, Haxor in uh, 7F2, but uh, makes it work. Teeks trying again with the Hammer Brother strategy. Let's see if he's able to maintain it this time around. Well, let's see if we can, yeah, if we can get it past, um, Piranha number two, he's already playing ahead of what he's done in the last two matches, this and the, uh, semi-final match at Kubi, because he lost in the same place. Right. He had terrific clips here in, uh, game one, first try on the first clip. And it took him a total of seven try, seven jumps. Or, uh, the clip there's number two. I think he's gonna take one more run at this and uh, see if he. And he's gonna keep going. He is. Okay. Num now he's gotta go for it. He can't. Uh, ten jumps this time. Not quite as clean as uh, game one, but still an impressive feat. And overall, it does save time compared to the called normal route. Haxor is about half, about a half, near the halfway point of uh, the World 7 airship. 
takes uh hammers to buzz. Oh, he oh. loses. He, I think he was he got a an input or something. So no uh, hammer for uh, Teeks. Time in seven F two. I'm I'm willing to say that was a an, an input eaten because I think he wanted to fire a hammer, but the game got like locked up or something. Maybe because there's too many sprites on screen. I mean, he so. was spamming that hammer quite a bit. Yeah. He gets a mushroom here, so he can always um, use that and save himself from having to grab two power-ups here in the airship. He can do it, but... Uh... So... Hacks are underway with, with uh, Ludwig. And not gonna bother to use the mushroom. So no. he's gonna have to pick up two power-ups. 10116 for the Hacksaw. Gonna use at least two minutes ahead of uh, Teeks, just starting the World 7 airship. are entering the first tank. This is this is one of the stages where it can be kind of uh, scary to try to not take damage throughout the stage. The the beginning can be a little busy, and uh, towards the end, before the long stretch of nothing, can be a little busy. But otherwise, it's not too too bad. Uh, Teeks uh, missing out on uh, Fire Mario. That's uh, fortunate. So, so yeah, based on uh, Haxor's time in game one, his World 7 split, he was 101.50 after World 7, he ended up with a 112.08, so based on that split, he is looking at about a 111.40.45, I'd say. Yeah. If everything if everything runs about the way it did in game two game two that it did in game one, yeah, that'd be my estimation of about a one eleven thirty to forty. Teeks underway with Ludwig, a pretty straightforward fight with you know the jumps. One oh three twenty seven for Teeks, who has over two minutes behind going into the final world, so yeah, it would take a awful lot for, um, for this lead to switch, for this lead to swing, and for us to have a winner-take-all game three. But, sort of drive the point home, Haxor is in Navy, and Teeks is just finally getting into World 8. Yeah, Haxar Antiques just dealing with these auto scrollers, so both of us kind of just taking our time, enjoying the scenery. Yeah. Oh, Haxar missing the Hammer Brother 
uh, throws, the hammer throws on to Boom Boom here. I'm gonna have to go with the old fashioned kill. He's able yeah. to maintain the hammers, fortunately. Yeah, the Hammer Bros uh, hitbox is, the, Boom Boom's hitbox can be really dodgy. Kind of have to run with it. Okay. No uh, force uh, hand here in the first. Nice double kill with uh, the hammer on Hammer Bros. Their own weapons against them. With a cruel irony. So, Axor, one down, two to go. This is a forced draw. He only had one in game one. Actually, so did Teague. Also getting one this time around. Ooh, taking damage and not able to get the fire flower. Yeah, he uh he was a little late on his timing in general. That, that, getting the fire flower in navy is an extremely tight window to begin with, and he, unfortunately he was a little late getting everything into position. So Axor underway in Air Force. In some respects, probably one of the more dangerous stages because of its uh, faster movement. So you got to be a little more precise with your platforming than you would be otherwise. Um, halfway at the halfway point, Axor doing just fine. Let's see if this fight goes a little better, and it does. Boom, boom, boom has a has a random hitbox, but uh, Haxor is able to make it work, and now he's got uh, five stages to go. Well, down the down to the wires. He's second to last star here in eight one, and it's build up some key speed for the. Uh, Gauntlet part of this level, and uh, no problem. Very fine, eight one by uh, Haxor. Completes last triple with cards. Eight two. Takes care of the angry sun. A little worried about that uh, music box drop, but gets makes it work just fine. Teeks picking up his fire flower last here in uh, the third hand stage. Uh, Axor in eight fort. Three stages left. Setting up for a one cycle run to the door. Good, looks good. Nicely done by Haxor. Yeah. Didn't quite get the setup he wanted with uh, Boom Boom, but uh, gets him on the backup and takes care of him. So, Super Tanks and Bowser to go. Going through eight, uh, two, one. 
A1, yeah. A1. A. Had a slight hesitation there, but uh, covers nicely and cleans out A1 very nice, very well done by uh, Teeks. Paxor in the home stretch of uh, Super Tank. Sun. This is it, final stage of the game for the Hacksaw. Taking some excellent time and going I, through the door. He's, go, he's going for the clip. This is a very tricky clip. Is he going for this clip? It's a little faster than um, navigating through the stage. If you do it, then gets it. I think like sixth or seventh try. So I think he is ahead on turn to time. Not by much, but uh, enough to where it should be on pace for a one sub one twelve. Bowser, and yep, he's gonna get the sub one twelve. As Teeks is entering the final stretch of the map. Get out the GG's for the Hacksaw. He will finish for the time of... 111.53 on the nose. GG to the Hacksaw who finishes third with a uh, sweep of a, a sweep best of three match over the five seed Teeks 88. So the GG's to Hacksaw. done with uh, his final boom boom fight he's looking at about to uh, probably about a 114 maybe yeah mid 114 and we have Haxor joining us we did congratulations it congratulations on getting third place hey thank you 14 yeah. maybe <laughs> Just yeah mid 114 uh, good job there yeah. and we have Haxor not quite like the, not quite exactly like the clip you did there at the end. Uh, a little swag for the fans. Yeah, I lost a little bit of time doing it, but uh, it, it's swaggy, but also it's a lot easier than actually pee speeding through the castle. I didn't have to worry yeah. about falling off donuts, so I was like, that, eh, it's fair. I'll go for it. Yeah, a pretty clean game too, apart from that little hammer bro adventure in World Six. It's like, oh, Teeks does not get. Uh, mm. Fire kill. So, oh dear. But uh, any yeah. anyway, I had a couple eaten inputs there. So, um, oh well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty good run. Uh, it was the first first race I had all tournament where I didn't lose like forty seconds in one level. So I was pretty happy about that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, game one, uh, two four was not your friend, uh, and that and some hammer bro adventures on top of that. But after that, you recovered nicely and actually pulled ahead of Teeks uh, around 4-3. Teeks had a bit of a rough go of it in uh, World 4. Yeah, I guess I made up like 40 seconds in World 4, and as I was going through, I was like, yeah, this is really good. I didn't make any mistakes, I think. Uh, well, I did, I guess, in the in the Fortress, but I recognize it fast. I only lost like two seconds probably in 4F1, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing that so, really make, uh, put you on pace for that sub-112 was getting that first try 7-1 clip. <laughs> yeah, they call me first try or 12th try. Haxer, that's my name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
that uh, or enter the door. <laughs> well, that's what happened to Teeks actually in game one. He went inside and uh, did the uh, gave it the old college try as far as that went. But yeah, that it's by that. And uh, we welcome uh, speak of the devil uh, Teeks eighty eight to the uh, the chat. GG. Uh, thanks so much. How's it going? Well, if he entered the door in the first race, then he would have PB'd had that not happened, probably. Dang, that sucks. I had that happen against Mitch in my last race, and it, I lost like a minute 20 or a minute 10, somewhere in there. Yeah. There were a couple, there were a couple other factors involved as well. Like, I, especially um, just taking damage twice in the in 4F1, that cost me, a, and then dying in uh, 4 or 5, that cost me about 30 seconds yeah you had yeah a, yeah yeah had about two or three deaths in the first race yeah yeah it's like four <laughs> it was like until until you got fire mario back in uh 4f2 it seemed like everything was kind of being tilted a bit for you and then finally got it everything under control and played your normal game from there yeah and then um and then i lost the hammer suit again in the same piranha in the last race yeah and this... mm -hmm. I actually set it up right, but I clipped into the center of the note block, and I just didn't make the height big, clear the gap over the to get to the pipe. Yeah. So. yeah oh, you like... lost in the piranha level. Oh. Yeah. So, so yeah, pretty. Uh, you were right. Pretty much the same place because I, I was calming your match against the Kubi, and it was yeah the exact same place, in the exact same way too. And then game two, yeah, I think it. They, I think in that case it was an eaten input. Was it? It's like too many uh, things going on and it wasn't giving you your hammer. Oh, uh, yeah. What happened in 7F2? It just looked like that second hammer sailed when I was trying to, to clear that second piranha on the floor. But... Yeah. But uh, your over, uh, overall uh, thoughts, guys, on uh, the tournament and your performance? I think that as far as my experience goes in the tournament, it's just been a steady progression where I got gradually better. I think that just this last one was just the exception where it was, it was actually my worst, considering right. all them. I didn't make as many mistakes as the first run, but they were just bigger ones overall. Right, right. Overall, um, yeah, um, just with running in general, it, it, it's one of those things where you can never just be too content with um, how you're doing in the first three or four worlds. Mm -hmm. Even when even when you you're on pace with PB as you're usually going, you're just always wondering what's going to be around the corner ready to club me in the head. And six five ended up being the culprit this time. Well, yeah. No. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> taking damage there. That's rough. That's like a second time loss or more. I got hit twice too, so. I lost a minute in that Oh world. god. Ouch. Yeah, I, I I had an Eden input on one of the Hammer Bro fights and I like jumped late and then I got hammered. And then uh I had some Eden inputs in six six as well. I thought I was gonna die, so I just kinda like corrected my bounces and was able to bounce on the spikes instead of get, you know, running into them. So that was good. But yeah, that was a little scary that that race actually. First race it went great. Yeah. Um I was pretty happy with the first race after after World Two. Um, obviously, I had the two deaths and two four. The second death was just complete crap. I mean, come on, man. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. The the first death, I mean, kind of was too. I jumped like a pixel or two too far and missed the Koopa. Uh, it happens sometimes, but it's pretty rare. Second race, like I think it was in my head from the first race. I actually, my second jump, I was worried I was gonna fall in the gap so i just uh i, I tailed off and lost a little bit of time there too but I was, yeah. I was pretty happy that uh, i finished with uh my best time on, on the second race of the whole tournament so that was good absolutely ggs to both of you guys and congratulations to Haxor on the bronze medal and congrats Geeks, for a fine performance congratulations uh, Haxor. Yo, thank you. Hey, congrats to you too, man. Fourth place is good. Um, you've definitely made a lot of progress in this category uh, over the course yeah. of the tournament. So, I mean, Absolutely. you'll probably be getting a 111 soon. So that's that's kind of the goal now. I know I could definitely save about 30 seconds if I play perfectly. So I'm looking for a mid, like the, a sub 112 sometime in the near future. All right. Well, 
As far as uh, this tournament's concerned, we have one more match to go. Uh, date is TBD, uh, but Mitch Flower Power and Zakubi will be facing off for the title uh, at some point this week. So keep an eye out on the schedule because it's going to be uh, quite a tilt between those two. Yeah, until then, we do have um, Super Mario Sunshine's bronze match going to be happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So keep oh. your eye out for that. That's Samurai Man versus SB Electric. So it's going to be a good match to watch. All right. Thanks all. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I get another shot at Mitch next Thursday. All forts race GDQ. Tune in, guys. Oh yeah. yes, looking forward to it. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to that. So uh, thanks it's all. Be a fun one, yeah. Thanks all, and uh, have a great week. Again, have a good night, everyone. Have a, good night. Yeah, have a great night.